This is a story that begins on Saturday, May 5th, 2018. My computer science teacher had just asked me to help out with a project some students in our class were working on, in conjunction with her school's engineering class. Little did I know that exactly one week later, this would happen. I was aware that our class was working on pinball machines, but because I had another project I was working on, I hadn't initially decided to help. On the following Monday, I went down to the engineering room to see what I could help with. I wasn't super familiar with the programming language or the wiring that they were doing, so my first task was simply organizing some files in a computer. The class was divided into three groups, each working on their own pinball machine. Each group was strictly forbidden from helping the other groups, especially the group that Leo was in. Eli, Ashley, and myself, however, were working on all three pinball machines, trying to get all the wiring correct and all the code working. After helping, it became clear to me that we were running very far behind schedule, given the plan was to compete in the Oregon Games Project Challenge, which was happening next Saturday. So that week, I decided to help out as much as I could to try to get them finished on time. I missed a lot of classes and spent a lot of after-school time, even staying as late as 9 p.m. on Friday. As I worked on it, I gained a greater understanding of how the wiring worked and accomplished some mini feats of my own, such as getting the seven-segment displays working. One of our main concerns was that the pinball machines wouldn't work at the OGPC. They had a lot of delicate wiring, so we worried that they would just completely fall apart during the 70-mile ride to Western Oregon University in Monmouth, Oregon. I had initially said I wasn't going, but at this point I was part of a team and I knew my help would be needed. And before I knew it, it was the day of the OGPC. It's 6.46 on a Saturday and my dad is driving me to drop me off at school. It's funny to think that just a week ago I wasn't a part of this at all and now I'm waking up at 6 on a Saturday, so that's, that happens, I don't know how that works. Yikes. After the hour and a half car ride there, it was time to try and get everything up and running before the judging began. This was a competition, and there would be prizes. After hours of troubleshooting, we were able to get basically everything working. A few pop bumpers didn't work, and the code was sloppy, but it was good enough because there weren't very high expectations. After all, our computer science teacher, Mr. Ansel, was confident that our pinball machine would land us the Judge's Choice Award. And who are we to doubt him? It was only last year that a student in his class won Best in Show. At 4 p.m., it was finally time to hear the results. And after a disappointing five-minute wait to get into the room, we didn't get to hear the results for another half hour while we were told inspiring stories about other much more successful video game developers. And then finally, we got to feel the pain of losing every single award. So that was disappointing. But so what if we didn't win anything? So what if the annoying kid with the top hat won best programming? It was still a fun experience for everyone. We got to impress a lot of people with working pinball machines. I got to meet Terry Alexander, the very first computer science teacher I ever had. And most importantly, I got to work with the team and learn more about wiring and programming Arduinos. Overall, it was a fun experience. I learned a lot and I can't wait to help work on whatever we build next year. And who knows, maybe we'll end up winning some awards next time.